first meeting ever between Nebraska and Texas Tech. Here at 4th and University Avenue in Lubbock, it's a hub of activity. Why? Well, it's building to a crescendo because we have a battle between two division leaders. In the north, it's Nebraska coming off an impressive shutout against Baylor. In the south, Texas Tech won on the road last week at Kansas. Part of the reason for their success, Byron Hanspard, the Heisman Trophy candidate, leads the nation in rushing, and today will be an acid test for him. Beating Nebraska, a daunting and for more on how to do it, here's John Spagnola. Mark, the Texas Tech coaches took a look at the Arizona State shutout of the Nebraska offense, and they saw a lot of similarities in their defense. Let's take a look at September 21st, 1996. Tom Osborne's first defeat in two and a half years, and it all revolves around speed. Arizona State has it, and so does Texas Tech on defense. They have to get after Scott Frost and not allow him to operate the option in that area of the football field. Penetration kills the option. And right here, it caused a critical turnover in that football game. Then, when you shut down the running game, you have to pressure the quarterback and create sacks. Three safeties in that football game. And, of course, the shutout of Nebraska's high-powered offense. In order to beat this team today, Texas Tech has the shutdown, yardage on first down, forced turnovers, and pressure frost. Dean Blevins will be charting all of that for us this afternoon and give us a progress report. Mark? Nebraska has a long conference winning streak. Texas Tech has a long home winning streak. One of those must give today. The kickoff when we come back. Welcome back to Jones Stadium at Texas Tech, where singer John Denver once went to school. And Dean Blevins, did he write any songs about the breeze here? Well, Mark, the wind will be a factor today, as you see by that shot. The wind's gusting. A typical West Texas gust of 17 miles an hour should impact both the kicking game and also the passing games this afternoon. We'll be monitoring that from you, from the sidelines, rather, for you. And also, here are some other stories. We'll chart that Arizona State formula John mentioned, which led to the big upset of the Huskers. And we'll tell you about a scholarship fund Tom Osborne heads up. Tech star lineman Casey Jones went to the courthouse to be cleared to play. And it's a jam-packed, loud house here where they're calling it the biggest game in memory. Yeah, it sure will be, Dean. And there's a look at the head coach for Texas Tech, Spike Dykes. Born just a few miles from here in Lubbock, Texas, he says that if you can't get up for this game, you belong up in the flute section somewhere. Meanwhile, his counterpart on the other side of the field is Tom Osborne. He's put in 23 years as head coach at Nebraska, and he has come to epitomize all the good things at Nebraska and all the good things about college football. The stately Tom Osborne, and just a few moments ago, one skydiver came in, and here's another one. You know what? Maybe this is the 12th man Dean Blevins <laughs> was talking about. I didn't know he arrived through the air. A very festive atmosphere here all week long. This game has been highly anticipated and highly debated. A sellout crowd here at Jones Stadium. I hope these guys have tickets to this game. That's <laughs> an elaborate way to get by the ticket booth. Texas Tech putting its 11-game home winning streak on the line. A tough ticket to get. Good landing that time. Yeah, right on the Big 12 Conference insignia on the sidelines. These two teams have met. This guy coming down a little bit quick. <laughs> Jeez whiz. We almost had a red carpet here instead of a green one. <laughs> Series record, Nebraska with three wins, no losses. They last met here two years ago. Nebraska won that game 42-16. That was the last home loss here for the Red Raiders and you know they were in that football game mark until the third quarter they were only down by a touchdown about midway through the third quarter and then things got away from them as so often happens when you play the Cornhuskers they can really detonate on you Nebraska meanwhile has brought its own contingent of fans all the way from Lincoln a good portion of them waking us up early this morning at the hotel <laughs> yeah that's a very raucous group <laughs> They travel all over to see this football team play. What a loyal following they have, not only at home, but on the road. Red will be one of the dominant colors today in the stands and on the field. There's a man without a pretentious bone in his body, isn't he? I mean, just a, just a breath of fresh air to sit down with Spike Dykes and talk football, life, religion, anything you want to talk about. 
A lot happening in the Big 12 Conference today. As the standings begin to take form midway through the schedule, Colorado leading Kansas right now in the fourth quarter. Colorado takes on Texas next week, a game you'll see right here on ABC. Iowa State and Oklahoma State just underway. We'll be keeping an eye on Troy Davis and Byron Hansford today. Hansford, of course, number one in the nation in rushing. Davis right behind him at number two. Well, John, Nebraska has won the toss and has decided to defer. Texas Tech will receive. Texas Tech has been very proficient in the early going so far in the last five games, actually. Busy day in college football, and we'll be keeping you up to date with scores, both from here and also from our studio with Roger Twibel in New York. Iowa leading Penn State, a bit of a surprise. Michigan coming back on Indiana. Indiana was ahead early in that football game, too, and boy, what a battle there at Camp Randall Stadium between Northwestern and Wisconsin. Now, Texas Tech, Mark, as you mentioned, does get off to good starts in football games. They scored on their first possession in five straight games. They haven't gone against a defense quite as good as Nebraska, though, but it would be a huge boost to this hometown crowd if they could get off on a good start here today. A lot of their hopes lie on the arm of that young man there. Hebby Lethridge, number eight, the quarterback. Okay, we're ready for the kickoff. I don't Chris. see anything else coming out of the air. No, not yet. Just a football falling from the sky now. That's Chris Brown's kickoff through the back of the end zone. And Texas Tech will start off on its own 20-yard line. Zebby Lethridge is completing just 43% of his passes, John, but that's kind of misleading when you look at the last few games. He's playing a lot better, completing 55% his last three games. He's a big concern because this is by far the most mobile quarterback this Cornhusker defense has faced so far this year. And I think to beat Nebraska, he has to create a lot of plays outside of the concept of the offensive plays. On the other hand, he can hurt this team by trying to do too much outside of the offense, too. That's one of the things that head coach Spike Dykes has to look out for. Texas Tech has a very fast pace and tempo on offense, and they come out on first and ten with four wideouts. Byron Hanspart, the lone back. And they hand it off to him, and he fumbles it! Nebraska could take it in for a touchdown! Just like that, Terrell Farley! That's exactly what the coach by Dykes didn't want to happen. So many teams, when they go against Nebraska, just play completely outside of themselves and do things that are uncharacteristic. Hanspark gets the ball on the inside trap, right up the middle. Let's see who gets a hand on it. Penetration from the inside. It looked like Jason Peter, number 55, got his hand on it, and Farley picks it up and goes right in and scores first play of the game. Nebraska's 12 turners this year for Nebraska's defense. Look at that, 56 points off those turnovers. There is a stunned silence and disbelief here at Jones Stadium. The sellout crowd of over 50,000 can't believe what they just saw. And neither can their head coach, Spike Dykes. On the first play of the ball game, Heisman Trophy candidate Byron Hansbard coughed it up on the hit from Jason Peter and Terrell Farley, who was suspended earlier this year, brought it in for the touchdown. Oh, take a little look at it, Mark. Yeah, you can see 55 Peter gets his hand in there, beats his blocker inside, knocks that ball out. You know, and your best football player makes a mistake on the first play of the game. It has a real deflating effect on your entire football team. And speaking of best football players, that guy Farley makes this defense go for Nebraska. They missed him in that game against Arizona State. Yeah, they sure did. He's 6'1", 205 pounds, a senior, and a Buckus candidate. Unbelievable, really, on the first play of the game. Makes Tom Osborne look like he's clairvoyant to kick off, doesn't it? And sure does. Think that his team's going to get a turnover and score on the very first defensive play? Well, if you just tuned in, folks, this is not the opening kickoff. We've only played seven seconds. Nebraska kicked off just moments ago. Texas Tech started with the ball on the 20. Hanspark coughed it up. Farley went in for the touchdown. And we're going to do it all again with Chris Brown kicking off. 
Casey Mitchell and Clint Robertson are back deep. It's going to be interesting to see just how Texas Tech reacts to this adversity. Brown has a strong leg. And where have we seen that before? Just moments ago, he kicked one eight yards deep. Let's do this thing again, John <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, you know, one thing Texas Tech can't do is do anything outside of their normal game plan. They have to play the way they designed this football game offensively today. The Chili's backs and receivers. Myron Hansbard, who fumbled just moments ago, very quiet, very self-effacing. And I'm sure that with his poise, albeit just a junior, he'll recover. Look at the offensive line. Ben Kaufman, good left tackle. He's got a great matchup today. Going against Wistrom there on the right side. Morris and Hansbart out of the eye. And they give it right back to him. Hansbart running between the tackles out to the 24-yard line. Tackled by Jason Peter. A look at the front seven of Nebraska. Grant Wistrom leads this team with four and a half sacks. These ends, Tomich and Wistrom, really make this defense go. Ralph Brown, the freshman cornerback, he's been picked on a little bit this year early. And I think he'll get tested today. They want to run out routes against him early in this football game. So let's look for some of that from Zebby Lethridge. It is second down and six. And Spark getting four on first down. Little option package. Lethridge was down before he coughed it up. He'll be about two yards short of the first down. It'll be third down, about two to go. Look at the team comparisons. Offensively, Tech, 451.5. Nebraska's defense, very stingy and staunch. Well, you're looking at the number 17 offense in the nation against the number seven ranked defense. So it's always a good matchup, especially rushing the football and defensive rush. Both of these teams are ranked very high in that category. John, it is third down and two on Tech's second possession of the ball game. Backs out of the offset eye. Hansbard, and he won't have the first down. Stopped up on the right side. He ran over Schurler and Dunn, but ran into Winstrom and Peter. So the big red-black shirts hold on the second possession, and Spike Dykes' team will have to punt. That's unfortunate for Spike Dykes, too. I know Osborne is happy about his defense so far in this game. The one thing they wanted to do is run right at that speedy defense in Nebraska, and they had success on first and second down. No success on third down, so they're forced to punt. Jeremy Hernandez is standing on his own 13-yard line for Texas Tech. At the 41 and brought down right at the 45-yard line. Octavius McFarland, a four-yard return on the 31-yard punt, just underway. Stay with us. Kickoff fielded by number four. Well, if you're just joining us, here's what happened on Tech's first play of the game. Byron Hanspard fumbled, and Terrell Farley scooped up the loose pill and took it into the end zone. It is now seven to nothing. And Nebraska has the ball on its first offensive possession, starting with very auspicious field position at the 45-yard line. Scott Frost is the quarterback, and he takes the snap. On the counter, Amon Green with a gain of about one. Scott R Frost is from Wood River, Nebraska, 6'3", 215, a junior, completing just 49% of his passes. And our Chili's backs and receivers, Amon Green, missed last week because of turf toe. He had a great week of practice and he is ready to go. There he is, number 30, and there's the offensive line that he'll be running behind. Aaron Taylor, an All-American candidate, and this is Amon Green out over midfield on Tech's side of midfield, falling forward at the 49, brought down by Monte Rager. Well, one of the things Dean Blevins is going to chart is that the Nebraska offense averages about 7.6 yards on first down. Red Raiders had a good defensive stand on first down. Now they put Nebraska in about a third and five situation. John, third down and four. Trips left formation for the Huskers. A single back set. On the option, Green gets a block. And he's right near the first down marker. 
It's going to be close. Let's take a look at the Red Raider defense. Dane Johnson made the tackle. He's the free safety on that last play. A look at the front seven. Yeah, Robert Johnson only weighs 194 pounds, but he flies around and leads this defense in tackles. And the secondary came up with a couple of big plays last week. A couple of interceptions. Tony Darden had one of them. That's Dane right. Johnson, another leader. In the fourth quarter to turn that game around uh, against Kansas. But Dane Johnson, I, I think he's going to be a key today. He has to prevent the breakouts by these Nebraska eyebacks. Right there, he was in on that play. If you can limit this team to five yards instead of 50 yards, you're going to be in the football game. That's Unbehagen, the offensive line coach, a Marine Vietnam vet. Great, great coach. Does a terrific job with these offensive linemen. You've got to feel what you can do in that situation. Okay? And see his calm demeanor belies the fire that burns inside of him when he coaches his guys. But I wouldn't keep that mic on him too long. This might, uh, we might have a few expletives here pretty soon. It's a family show. 11:33 <laughs> to play in the first period. Nebraska getting the first down on that run by Amon Green. First and ten. Nose of the ball at the Texas Tech 45-yard line. Schuster and Green out of the eye. Frost on the option. Pitches to Green. And they played the option well that time, John. A loss of about two yards on the play. Johnson and Rager making the tackle. Yeah, let's watch Monte Rager. I talked about the penetration. I talked about speed defense. Number 34 comes in across. Plays off his block, hold it there a second, and then he just accelerates to the football. Watch the speed that this defense has. The closing speed into the uh, backfield of that Nebraska defense. It's hard to operate the option when there's that much penetration. Second down and 11, the counter. Nebraska has played, run five plays so far. All five of them have gone to number 30, Amon Green, who comes up limping this time on that left leg. That's that turf toe again. You know, he was out a game and a half, hurt it against Kansas State, and that's the kind of thing that can really bother you. That means that Damon Benning, number 21, comes into the backfield now on third down and seven. A look at the team comparisons. Nebraska offensively, Tech defensively. Nebraska offense 18th in the country. They move the football. Brock delivers a strike, complete. Near the first down marker to John Vedra, the 5'11", 205-pound senior. And the fans booing because of the spot, I think, that time. He appears to be about a half yard short of the first. Vedra's going to work up here and come right inside. Texas Tech plays man-to-man -man defense. They bring some pressure up front. And let's see if we can help out with that spot. Yes, yeah, just right inside of that yard mark. That's an accurate spot, Mark. John, fourth down and short. Tom Osborne deciding to go for it. Scott Frost, a mobile, agile quarterback, has the first down at the 34-yard line. Getting a good surge over that center, number 67, Aaron Taylor. And it's a first down for the Cornhuskers. Well, if you want to run the football, go behind your two All-Americans, Aaron Taylor right here. And Chris Dishman right here, they're just going to surge forward, wedge blocking. And nobody from Texas Tech is really in a position The linebackers. They fill late. You can see them filling late right there. I wonder why more teams don't set up to stop the sneak on third or fourth and short. Yep. Interesting point. <coughs> Excuse me, down to the 30-yard line, actually down to the 29. Zebby Lethridge is another guy who is going to uh, quarterback sneak a great deal because he's such a good athlete. Nose of the ball just inside the 30. It'll be second down and five. Ace formation, two tights, two wide, single back check. Knocks it up. <laughs> and Texas Tech takes one back. I think Monte Rainer got it, didn't he? 34? Yeah. And that gets the crowd going here at Jones Stadium. That adds definition. That is new meaning to the word cough it up, doesn't it? That ball, <laughs> that ball definitely got cut. It's a full block here. Dishman's going to come around. This is a very common play that they like to run here at Nebraska. But let's see who gets their hand on the football. 
right there just caught sight. Somebody through the right side came through. Daniels, 86, looks like he got a hand on it. Big turnover for the Red Raiders. Yeah, only Nebraska's seventh turnover of the year. Give them something to cheer about. We'll be right back. Boy, Penn State and Ohio State hit the snooze bar today, huh? I'll tell you, it is hard to work your way through that Big Ten schedule. There are just too many good football teams that come along at some point in the season to get you. Jim Coletto, the head coach of Purdue, has got to feel good about going up against his former team, where he used to coach, and doing well so far. Hans Bart, the deep back in the eye. First and 10, Texas Tech of the 24. Nebraska coming with the blitz. And Zebby Lethridge is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Jeff Ogard making the tackle. They came with a corner blitz that time, putting pressure on the quarterback who stepped up. Lethridge can't improvise, but he had nowhere to go that time. It'll set up second down and 11. Well, uh, you know, that had to be a quarterback draw. I'm looking, and he's looking at the left side of the football field. There were no receivers out on that side of the field. to Hansbart. Hansbart powering his way out over the 25, out to the 28-yard line. Be about seven yards short of the first down. Jason Peter and Mike Minter, the strong safety, making the tackle for the Cornhuskers. You can see a lot of the runs so far for Texas Tech has been right at this defense. There's so much speed sideline to sideline that the coaching staff basically feels the best way to attack them is to go right at them. Hansbart, 6 feet, 193 pounds. The coach is telling us that he's improved running between the tackles this year, as opposed to just running on the perimeter. A little movement on the offensive line on third down and six. Folks, tomorrow ABC Sports brings you Major League Soccer's first championship game. LA Galaxy against DC United. Tomorrow live at 3.30 Eastern time. Our referee today, the man wearing the white hat, Randy Crystal. Sets up third down and 11 after that penalty against Texas Tech. And one more look at our officiating crew. Lethridge to pass. A catchable ball by Sheldon Bass, it was slightly behind him, but there's a flag down on the play. He might have got roughed on that play. I got a feeling that Grant Wistrom got called for personal foul, roughing the quarterback. I thought the offensive line did a real good job in pass protecting for Lethridge. And the, the ball appeared to be tipped, too. Well, that's a good break here for Texas Tech. They have not enjoyed a lot of success offensively here in the early going. Personal foul, roughing the passer, automatic, first down. And that is their first first down of the game. Watch Big 98 coming in from the right side. Lethridge again, he gets good protection. See his right tackle, Schurler doing a good job for him. And all of a sudden there's that late hit and that push down by Wistrom and that's the penalty. Byron Hansbard out to the 45-yard line. That time running for about six between the center and the guard. Jeff Ogard, number 97, making the tackle for Nebraska, the 6'6", 310-pound senior. Hansbard, an ordained minister. And he is as unselfish as they come. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins for an injury update. Guys, good news for Zadica and Nebraska. I'm behind the bench now. The trainers have been looking at his right ankle. It's stable. They're retaping it. He will re-enter. And also, eye back Amon Green will re-enter with an aggravated turf toe. Here's another eye back. Hands far on second and four. Run out of bounds right near the first down marker by Michael Booker, number 20. And he's close to the first down. Well, I think Byron Hansbart is at the point now where he can relax a little bit. You know, when you have a mistake like that early in the football game, you get a little flustered, although this guy in his undying belief in the Lord is, is pretty much unflappable. Not a whole lot seems to phase him. He is as poised a student athlete as I have met this year. Very self-effacing. Very disarming. 
very spiritual. And here's the measurement. It's a first down for Texas Tech. Their second of the ball game comes with 6.28 to play in the first period. They yeah. come in all sizes here. Yeah, they do. You know, Chuck Reedy made a real good point. He's the head coach for Baylor about hands part. He said, if he gets 200 yards against Nebraska today, he said, just mail him the Heisman. Don't even have a vote. <laughs> From DeSoto, Texas. Tell you, he doesn't run like a DeSoto. <laughs> a lot faster than those things. Field Scoville split wide to the top of your screen on first down. Hansbard down to the 46. Let's check in with Roger Twible in New York for an update on USC. Roger? Well, Mark, we've got an upset in the making out in Tempe, Arizona. First quarter, Lavelle Woods 13 yards on the touchdown run. Both of the touchdowns for USC have come off interceptions of Jake Plummer. 14 to nothing, first quarter. Mark? Well, Roger, it looks like uh, upset Saturday is in the making right now. I don't know. Arizona State came back against UCLA. They, 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 they can come back. They're a football team that can come back when they're behind. Second down and six. Hansbard, nothing doing. Flag down. Thrown at the interior line play. Boy, Hansbard running between the tackles again, John. Ran into a wall that time. Tackled by Jay Foreman, number 56. And Eric Stokes, number 16 for Nebraska. There's flags down on the play. Spike's expression has not changed. Very stoic looking so far. A slim down, Spike Dykes. And a look at the avuncular Tom Osborne. Here's the call. Defense. Offside. Holding. On the offense. Replay, second down. So that's a break. Set. Yeah, break for Texas Tech. At the very top here, Grant Wistrom jumps offside. That's part of that quick cadence offense that Texas Tech has. Now there's the offsides play. Now I, I try to find the holding call, but it's really hard to see. So offsetting, and they do it over again. Second down and six for Texas Tech. The ball at Nebraska's 47. They gave it to the fullback that time on the option that Sammy Morris, number 42, who had a touchdown last week in their win against Kansas. Morris, number 42, is filling in for the starting fullback, Ryan Jones, who had an appendectomy yesterday afternoon. Yeah, they said he'll be out about two weeks with that uh, illness. Gain of a couple yards on second and six. It's third down and four. Texas Tech with the ball in the 45-yard line of Nebraska. Under five minutes to play in the first period. Lethridge is going to throw. And he throws over his intended receiver's head. Sheldon Bass, number 18. It'll be fourth down. Never seemed to quite get set that time. No, he did, but there, there were two Texas Tech receivers open. There was only one defender for Nebraska. But their spacing was poor, and Lethridge didn't want to force the football in there. Lethridge completing less than 50% of his passes, although he's been on a roll in the last three games. So far today, he is 0 for 2. Jeremy Hernandez punting, standing on his own 41. And they'll down this. <laughs> Inside the five at the two-yard line. They did it correctly. A 43-yard punt by Hernandez, who puts it down on the two. Nebraska with 98 yards to go. One more look at the artwork of Jeremy Hernandez. We'll be right back. I'm Mark Jones in the house, along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. Nebraska against Texas Tech, a battle of two division leaders. Who's number one, my dear? Well, <laughs> we're going to find out. Deep in the shadows of their own goalposts, Amon Green back in the ball game after that leg injury, running it out over the five-yard line, tackled by Jody Brown, the strong safety. Amon Green last year ran for 1,086 yards on the ground. Didn't play last week because of that turf toe. 
rushing six times today for a total of 16 yards. Matt Hoskinson, number 62, is in at right guard for Rob Zaniska. On second and seven, a nice defensive play by the Tech defense. Cody McGuire and Corey Chandler teaming up to make the stop. Yeah, Cody McGuire knifed right in. And as I said, you know, this defense likes to penetrate and take chances. The problem you have is that if you don't cover your gap responsibility, you can have a breakout. That time McGuire won, slanting inside and got right on the running back. Third down and eight. On their own three, two tight ends in for Nebraska. Frost is going to throw. Pick up. And this will be room service. crowd to have something to cheer about early. Well, there it is. Robert Johnson with the interception returned it back for a touchdown. Well, the turnovers are even now. Two scores off of two turnovers. We're back to square one in this football game. But again, take takes a page from the Arizona State playbook defensively, forcing points from the defense deep down in their territory. Jarrett Greaser in for the extra point. And we have a tie ball game with 331 to play in the first quarter. Scott Frost goes to play action, and it's a dangerous thing when it's third and long to go to play action. The blitz is on. He throws the football. Robert Johnson had nobody, John, between him and the end zone after the catch. That's right, and there he is in great shape, Robert Johnson, who makes so many plays for this defense. you look from behind. And I, you know, when a quarterback's got to turn his back to the football or the downfield for a long time, he can only locate one receiver. He's trying to go to Brandon Holbein, but Johnson took a deep drop and gets into the end zone. Frost has had problems before, most notably with his voice. Sometimes Nebraska will audible and his players will not hear him. Makes you wonder if that might have happened in that occasion. That time. Tech with some points off the turnover that time. And we're tied at seven apiece. Well, that was all set up by shutting down the running game. Good execution by the special team, setting up the good field position, and all that works together. The Texas Tech gets back in this football game. But more importantly, they get the crowd back into this football game. Spike Dyke said that they have to look up in the third and fourth quarter and say, we have a chance to win it still. Here's D'Angelo Evans. And he coughs it up. Out of bounds, Nebraska will retain possession at the 25. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins for more on the quarterback, Frost. Guys, it was unusual when Frost came off the field. Tom Osborne just patted him on the back. No words of uh, encouragement or discouragement, I should say. No bad words. And then uh, Turner Gill, his quarterback's coach, didn't have anything to say to him. And when he came off the sideline, several players came up to him, were kind of jacking around with him, laughing and uh, smiling. So uh, I guess they took that in stride. Maybe there's some inside joke we don't know about. It may be, Dean. Frost said confidently before this contest that the days of people thinking that I'm nervous are over. Well, we'll have to see if that's true or not. And he said he's reacting now as a quarterback instead of just thinking. Uh, before he did a lot of thinking, he checks at the line of scrimmage. Frost keeps it on the option. Frost pushed out of bounds at the 31-yard line by Darwin Brown. Well, Monday night, Annie Pot stars in an all-new Dangerous Minds, and Junior Seau in San Diego charged up because the Raiders are coming to town. AFC West rivals clash on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. That's Monday, beginning at 8 Eastern, right here on ABC. You know, back to Frost, I was 
intimating earlier about his players not being able to hear him, John, when he checks at the line. Yeah, so they do a lot of less uh, audible than they did before. They learned that lesson in Arizona State. Second and four. They give it to the fullback, number 28, Brian Schuster. The 5'11", 230-pound senior who gains about a couple yards on the play. Tackled by number 86, Tony Daniels for Tech. You know, Tom Osborne made a real interesting comment, too, about Scott Frost. He said, you know, we had played down there in the Fiesta Bowl, and we didn't think we had any problem with audibling, but we failed to realize is that half the fans were ours down there. <laughs> because they were all against us in the uh, second game of the season, and consequently, we couldn't get a lot of things done in audibling, so we're not going to do much of that anymore. <laughs> Nebraska fans not, with not many tickets down there. Third and one. And Frost appears to have the first down. Frost again on the quarterback keeper. And that'll move the chains with 2.43 to play in the first quarter. We're tied at seven apiece. Both teams getting on the scoreboard via the defense. A look at Scott Frost's improvement in games three through five. Yeah, I think that's what you mentioned. He started to relax to react instead of thinking it's going to make some big plays. Play action going up top. Brendan Holbein just off his fingertips. Incomplete. Boy, Corey Turner did a great job. Number 21 in coverage on Holbein. Holbein trying to go downfield and beat him. And again, when you run the football as effectively as they do, 324 yards a game, the play action is effective, especially on first down. Watch this. Stride for stride. Corey Turner right there. Great coverage, and they're going to be locked in, man, a lot today. The cornerbacks are for Texas Tech. Right now, they're facing three wide receivers. The give is out of the backfield to Green. Amon Green, still on his feet, finally brought down at the 45-yard line. A 19-yard pickup and a first down. The tackle made by Dane Johnson. Amon Green, a versatile back, both running and, as you saw there, receiving out of the backfield. That's the ordained minister, Byron Hanspark. Trying to make his mark with some Heisman balance in the offing today. First and ten, Nebraska. They get it to the fullback. Oh, that's a late shot. That's got to take a penalty. Oh, I can't believe no flag was thrown there. Chris Dishman takes a shot downfield at a Texas Tech defender. Cody McGuire, and, and that was well after the whistle, and nothing was called. McGuire coming out of the ball game. He, he must have said something about his mother or something like that, <laughs> don't you think? Examining the family tree. It'll be second down and eight. Two tights and two wide, single back. They call that the ace formation. The pitch, Green. Green lowers his hat and put his sombrero on the cornerback that time. 13-yard pickup and a first down. Back to that last play, though. Here's the action after the play. Yeah, there's 75. You see Big Dishman pushing on Cody McGuire. The play's over. And some of the players, John Abinjan, you can see 56, gesturing to the official. Like, what's that? You know, I'm surprised. Green with a big gain on that last play. They didn't take the pitch man defensively. They, let, they took Scott Frost. The defense today is supposed to allow Frost to get open, not the pitch man in the option. Yeah, they want Frost to beat them by taking everything else away. Frost keeps it, oh, and he ball. fumbles it. Texas Tech says they have it. The officials saying otherwise. Nebraska retains possession. That's the fourth time we've seen the ball on the rug today. Yeah, Nebraska's been lucky. They put it on the ground three times now. Frost is audibling. You see he's trying to get everybody to hear what direction they're going to run the option in. He runs the play. And again, see, they're taking away the pitch. And they allow him to run upfield and strip the football. Tony Daniels got in there and stripped it away. Second and five. Amon Green up the middle. At the 18-yard line, another Nebraska first down. Dwayne Price. The free safety made the tackle for Texas Tech. But they moved the chains again with 18 seconds to play in the first quarter. We're tied at seven. Nebraska's big offensive line and their running game have a tendency to wear you down. Yeah, this is what scares me. This, this will be the tenth play of this drive. And the Cornhuskers love these long, methodical drives. They can wear down this defense. They outweigh them by 52 pounds up front. 
Well, the first 15 minutes are in the books at Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. Tom Osborne's team tied at 7-7 against Texas Tech. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Lubbock, Texas, the place where the late Buddy Holly used to call home. And inside Jones Stadium, Spike Dyke's team tied at seven against Nebraska. The Cornhuskers, though, with the ball. It is first down and 10 at Texas Tech's 17-yard line. This is the 10th play of the drive. Amon Green is the deep back in the eye. And Scott Frost is audibling again. got jacked at the 23 by Monte Rager. How do you like that? I think right now, Mon Green saying, I think you audible to the wrong play, Scott. <laughs> Again, this penetrating defense, just at the bottom of your screen, you see Monte Rager come right through on the inside black of the block of the tackle, gets by the fullback. Straights right through, and that is a horrifying sight if you're an eye back. <laughs> Getting hit like that right up the middle. Second and 14. The flanker screen, Holbein drops it. Brendan Holbein had it in his arms and couldn't squeeze. It'll be third down and 14. Tony Daniels again exerting pressure. We've seen him making a lot of plays today. Number 86 should be coming off your right side. Yeah, there he is. Oh, you know what? And the... The tackle slipped over the motion. Dishman, 75, slipped or tripped over the back that was going in motion and couldn't get a pass set. Scott Frost with a decision to make here. Three wide receivers to his right. Third and 14, incomplete into traffic, and it'll be fourth down. And the Texas Tech defense had a nice sequence there. They did. They regrouped when they changed the quarter, and they had three very good downs defensively. Scott Frost is two for six now for just 25 yards. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Well, guys, the formula that worked for Arizona State is working in large part today for Texas Tech. Take a look at the first down yardage. 1.9. Forced two turnovers. Two others fumbles were recovered. And, of course, two pressures on Frost, so Tech doing a great job defensively. Chris Brown missed two field goals last week. But this one is good from 39 yards out. He is now 8 of 11 on the year, and that propels Nebraska into the lead. 10-7 when we come back. Here's a look at the numbers from the first quarter. Of course, the score now is 10-7. John, if you're Texas Tech, you're a little concerned about the rushing yardage, I would think. Yeah, well, they've rushed the football for 29 yards. No completion so far. Lethbridge is over two. He has to throw the football somewhat today. And, of course, points off turnovers. Both teams doing well with the points off the turnovers today. Both of them scoring defensively. Chris Brown kicking off for Nebraska. Stacey Mitchell and Clint Robertson back deep for Texas Tech. And for the third time, it goes to the end zone. Mitchell says no thought about it then took the knee that, that was into it. the win too I mean uh, the others he blasted out of the end zone behind the win Northwestern comes back again boy can they win at the end of the game they did it against Michigan and they do it today against Wisconsin conversely Wisconsin John we saw them earlier this year lose one at the wire against Penn State and they battled Ohio State tough very tough for the very end Texas Tech with the nose of the ball on the 20-yard line. Their own 20 as we begin the second quarter. 14-13 to play in the half. Backs out of the eye. Hands barred with just 25 yards rushing. Well, we'll have to take a few off the net. Make that 23 after that play. John Hess and Grant Winstrom making the tackle. Hess really brought it that time. He did. You know, both of these teams play very similar styles. They shoot gaps. They come around from all over the place. Look at big number 44, John Hess, right there, is going to shoot right through. Gets behind the pulling guard and just runs the play down from behind. Sets up second down and 13. Hess already has his psychology degree. Completed it in just three and a half years. Luckily passing. It's caught, but it's caught out of bounds. That's the bad news. P.J. Jason, the tight end, caught it out of bounds. It'll be third down and long for Texas Tech. 
and the quarterback was brought down hard after the play. He was, but that is the difference, say, between Brian Kavanaugh from Kansas State two weeks ago and Zebby Leffridge here today. Kavanaugh would have been sacked. Leffridge at least got rid of the football and gets to dial another play. And although he didn't complete the pass, he certainly saved at least a 15-yard loss on that play from the pressure from Jared Thomas. Third and 13 for Zebby Lethridge, a situation they don't want to be in. Trips right formation. Four receivers. Lethridge hit his receiver in the hands. Incomplete. Donnie Hart dropped it. And they'll have to punt. That ball was thrown a little bit too hard, though. I mean, Donnie Hart is trying to escape bump and run coverage. We know Nebraska loves to play bump and run down here. He's going to spend some time escaping coming in. But that ball's thrown with a little too much zip on it for him to handle, and he had to clear the quarterback first. If Leverage had been able to wait a half a second longer, that could have been a real big play. But that's what that bump and run defense does. It just disrupts your passing game. So it's three and kick for Texas Tech. Jeremy Hernandez standing on his own two-yard line. The dangerous Mike Bullman is one of the return men back for Nebraska. Damon Benning returns at six yards. Out to the 34. A 55-yard punt and six on the return. Nebraska with the ball again. Well, that, great coverage by the special team. It's 10 to 7. We'll be right back. To drop a little knowledge on you with this Nebraska tidbit. Their first win over an out-of-state school was in 1892 when George Flippin led Nebraska with 6-0 win over Illinois. Flippin was the first African-American athlete in Nebraska and only the fifth black athlete at a predominantly white university. The Cornhuskers with the ball. Out to the 38-yard line is Amon Green. Corey Chandler making the tackle. 13-04 remaining in the first half. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Clevins. Nebraska leads Texas Tech 10-7. Nebraska leads the Big 12's North Division. Tech leads the South Division. Second down and eight. Both teams with scores from their defense on turnovers. And Frost is audibling again. The question is, can they hear him? On the pitch. Green brought down at the 34. Jody Brown, number 30, led the charge. Strung out the option nicely that time, John Spagnola. You know what? A lot of cat and mouse going on. Jody Brown did a great job of moving inside and outside on the lineman while Frost was audibling right down here at the bottom. He moved around from the inside to the outside. Now all of a sudden Frost realized he was in a predicament. He had called the wrong play. And look at the great job Jody Brown does, not only to play the quarterback, but then play the pitch as well. But that's because he was moving around before the snap. They want Scott Frost to be the one to beat them. Third and 11, four wide out, Frost to throw. Missing badly, incomplete. Intended for John Vedrill, number 25. And Jody Brown again on coverage, so it's an excellent series for Jody Brown, number 30, for that Tech defense. Much to the delight of the sellout crowd here at Jones Stadium. A win today for Tech would be monumental for the program in the big picture. That has been a constant theme here all week. Jesse Cush to punt for Nebraska. Back deep, that's Clint Robertson. Matt DeBuck is the up man standing at the 28. A great punt by Cush. Robertson at the 18. Saw a scene for a minute, but it closed very quickly at the 26. Boy, he sure did. A 50-yard punt, 10 on the return. Well, next Saturday live at 3.30 Eastern, Virginia tries to snap Florida State's winning streak. Ohio State against Iowa. Texas up in Colorado. That's the game that we'll be at. And Washington takes on Oregon. It starts 3.30 Eastern time, 2.30 Central. Call your cable operator for the games available in your area. You know, it's really fun to watch this game from a defensive perspective because 
really both defenses play so well against the run and they do so much stunning and fainting and moving around with their linebackers. It's one of the reasons why they're so successful defensively. Byron Hansbard out to the 27 yard line gaining about two. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins for more on the eye back. Guys, Tech's trying to figure out a way to defeat this incredible Nebraska defense. Running back coach Rudy Maskew is talking to Hansbard saying, get up the field. Don't be running sideways. And that's easier said than done against this defense. <laughs> but changing a couple of blocking assignments as well. It, uh, that's exactly easier said than done. It's 100 yards in the last 12 games. He's going to work for every one of those yards today if he gets to the century mark. Yeah, he's run for 23 so far, John, on eight rushes. Lethbridge going to throw. To Donnie Hart, number 82. Hart about a yard short of the first down, but Lethbridge delivering a dart that time. Mike Fullman made the tackle. Yeah, Lethbridge gets rid of the football quickly. Dick Winder worked with him. That was his first completion today. That ball gets out of there pretty quickly. There's no wasted motion. When Winder was here, now he's at Oklahoma. He worked with Lethbridge on that release and did a nice job with him. It'll be third down and one to go. This is the kind of day where you're thankful you have a quick release. And quick feet. Hansbard running outside. He's got the first down. Byron Hansbard is looking for some Heisman votes. Michael Booker, the corner, made the tackle. But not before he picked up the first down. You know, that was one of those offensive first downs that Texas Tech gets. They break the huddle. They go to the line of scr scrimmage quickly. And as a result, watch. now watch how they come out of the huddle. They're ready to go. Nebraska's adjusting. Some people are lining up. Boom. People still get in position. Uh-uh. That play's ready to go. And this is where that quick tempo out of the huddle can really help an offense. That's the first third down conversion of the ball game for Texas Tech. Lethbridge seemed to juggle the ball for a while and was sacked back at the 43-yard line by Grant Winstrom, the nominee for Conference Player of the Week last week for the Cornhuskers. He had five tackles a week ago with one sack against Baylor. Well, he's a specimen, 6'5", 250 pounds. There's a sack now in 33 straight games. And Winstrom is a big part of this defense here. Just a junior, he's got a 3.48 GPA in free pharmacy. A lot of bright guys on this Nebraska team. Second down and 13 after that sack by Winstrom. Nebraska blitzing. Hansbard brought down at the 35-yard line, but there are flags littered all over the field. See, we saw it on third and one. You go up and you quick count. Nebraska expects that. You go up this time and you don't, and you quick count, but you don't hike the football and you get an offside penalty. I'm honestly amazed that more offenses don't do that. I think it's a great concept. Yeah, we saw Oklahoma do that last week with a good degree of success against Texas. On the defense, we we'll replay second down. Two penalties against Nebraska today. You saw for 21 yards. They average five a game for 43 yards. It's a disciplined football team. They don't hurt themselves or beat themselves, at least in most of the games. Arizona State is the one exception this year where they just simply did not come to play. It was a bit of a wake-up call. Admittedly so. Yeah, I think it was a good thing for him, actually, because uh, you get to a point after two national championships, you walk on a football field and you can almost win by showing up. Yeah, success can spoil some people. Even your fans. Second down and eight for Lethbridge. Quarterback throw. He's got a ton of room. Sebi Lethbridge has the first down at Nebraska's 35-yard line. Michael Booker ran him out of bounds, but not before a 16-yard pickup. Heads up play by Lethbridge. Yeah, what's interesting about this play is when he takes the football, he jets to his left a little bit while he knows the blocking is being set up to the right. And as a result of that, downfield, the secondary is pulled a little bit over to the other side of the field, and he's got great athlete, exceptional skills. Now watch how the linebackers just go to their right a little bit. Oh, now they go back to the left. By then, a lot of the blocking has already been set up for Zebby Lethbridge. 8.47 to play in the first half. Nebraska leads by three. Lethbridge hands it off to his fullback that time, Sammy Morris, a six foot, 212 pound freshman who's brought down right near the line of scrimmage or maybe for a yard loss. Again, uh, Nebraska taking a page from the tech defense now and stopping on first down, forcing 
second and longs, third and longs for the Tech offense. So, and you know, both defenses just play a, such a similar style. It's really interesting to watch. Lethbridge can't do too much. We talked to Spike Dykes about that. He said if he sees his quarterback trying to do too much, that he'll bring him over on the sideline and throw some cold water on him. <laughs> second and 12. Out of the backfield. Hands barred. And the Nebraska defense runs to the ball. That is exhibit A. They got there quickly with about three of them making the tackle at the 35-yard line. Jamel Williams and Mike Fullman, number 12, made the tackle on Lethbridge. Pardon me, hands part. Well, you're right about that, though, Mark. I mean, the, the closing speed for this team is incredible. It's really a lot of it, as you said, Jamel Williams made the tackle there. Those guys are really defensive backs playing a linebacker position, and they're protected by that defensive line. It was about four years ago, John, that Nebraska changed its defensive philosophy putting speed guys on the corners, uh, getting that Florida State style implemented into their own system. Third down and nine. The draw. Has the first down at the 24-yard line. An 11-yard gain. Jared Thomas made the tackle. And that offensive line is pumped up. I see Shane Dunn, 68, jumping up and down. Draw play, it's an obvious passing situation. Number 66 gets a great block sealing off inside. That's Chris Whitney. And Hansbart gives you an idea of the slashing kind of speed he has. John, you talk about that offensive line. They're a model of synergism. Individually, not that talented, but a different story as a group. Yeah, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And in this case, the offensive line coach, Ted Underhagen, did a great job pulling this whole group together. Out of the eye, Hansbart again. The meter's running, folks. Down to the 19-yard line. Tack on five more to his total. He's run 12 times for a total of 49 yards. Terrell Farley made the tackle on that play. And I think that Spike Dykes is feeling that his team is going to gain some confidence now from this long drive. His offense is starting to gel and come together. His defense realizes that they no longer have to play in desperate situations. And I think he's going to implore his team that, you know, we can play with Nebraska. Let's keep doing the things we're doing. Well, we're told that we're experiencing weather problems from parts of the country, and for those of you having picture trouble because of our satellites, hope to get it straightened out for you. And Hansbard is rocked at the 22-yard line, but there's a flag down on the play. Boy, Hess came running through again, didn't he? I mean, that's a couple of times we've seen him in the backfield just as the running back is getting the handoff. You can feel those hits up here. But it's offside against Nebraska. These teams are both built on the premise of a strong rushing attack. Ranked number three and four in the country. Husker 324 and the Raiders at 322 a game. Why are the numbers very similar between these two teams? Especially rushing offense and rushing defense. They're both ranked in the top ten in both categories. But I like the way at least Texas Tech has been able to keep Nebraska at bay. Keep in mind, you know, only five penalties a game. They have three already and a couple cheap ones now. Three for 26. Nothing cheap in football, huh, John, if you're oh. on the receiving end? Oh, man, but if you can, if you can get first downs without having to dial a play or, do, or hit anybody, you know, you, you are definitely a lucky team. This is the 10th play of the Tech drive. The waggle. Lethridge oh. tackled in the backfield wow. by Mike Rucker, 84. The 6'6", 250-pound sophomore with a wingspan like a pterodactyl. Yeah, you're right about that. That's his uh, third. Well, he has three and a half sacks now in the season. Came into the game with two and a half sacks. But he showed a great job of staying over his feet and not allowing the moves as Lethbridge to get by him. Lethbridge gave him everything he could. He gave him the head. He gave him the hip. He gave him the leg. He gave him the wiggle. <laughs> and you know what? Rucker said, no, thank you. You're going down. <laughs> Sound like Zebby was about to do a little dance here. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the escape. Look at the current drive. Second and 18. Hansbard running off tackle over the right tackle. Lynn Schurler and the guard, Shane Dunn. Makes it down to the 18-yard line. It'll be third down and long. Eric Stokes, number 16, making the tackle for the Cornhuskers. Well, this would wind up being about a 34-yard field goal. That's definitely within Jarrett Greaser's range. He's 7 to 10 on the year. They have to get down to the 4-yard line to get a first down. I'd like to see them take a shot here with their offense. And they uh, are bringing the receiving units into the field. 
Ohio State storming back against Purdue. That's a tie game. Right here, third down and 14 to go. Here's the waggle. Complete to the tight end, P.J. Jason, but it's short of the first down at the 11-yard line. Yeah, Jason got hit pretty hard on that play, but he held on to the football. It was jarred loose after he landed on the ground. It was an interesting play. They had all the receivers on the right side of the field, and then they tried to come back to the left side of the field. So in comes the field goal kicker, Jared Greaser, to attempt a field goal. This one coming from about 30 yards out. They're going to call it 29 now. Out of the hole, the field Scoville. Greaser, 7 of 10 on the season. He usurped his predecessor and now is the starting plates kicker. And here it comes. And he nails it, no doubt. Hey, we're tied at 10 apiece. Texas Tech coming into this contest, 22-point underdogs. D.J. Jason made the catch, but he paid a bit of a price. Freezer got the triple. We'll be right back. Well, it tastes good right now for Texas Tech. They're tied with Nebraska, 10-10 with 337 to play here at Jones Stadium. Tech with an 11-game home winning streak on the line. Nebraska, conversely, has not lost a conference game in 25 outings. You know, they tied that score up. Look at the drive time, though. Eight minutes and two seconds on that drive. That's one way to deny a good rushing attack to football. But, John, this game has a very fast tempo. Greece are kicking off. Back deep, it's Damon Benning and D'Angelo Evans. Did that one go through the uprights? Wow. We have seen a kicking display here. A couple of strong legs from both Greaser and Chris Brown of Nebraska. Nebraska will start off on its own 20-yard line with 3.37 to play. Look at that ball. Just wide, wide left. Wouldn't have counted anyway, would it? <laughs> you know, Nebraska so far in this quarter has negative five yards rushing. Texas Tech doing a great job defensively. Two tight ends set. Amon Green. Oh, did he get hit at the 17? Tony Daniels hit him and hit him hard. He brought it. Tom Osborne. One of the great educators and coaches in college football. You know, Frost is showing a little bit of uh, frustration here. Watch him. He makes the pitch. You know, again, nobody's really taking him. But watch him. He gets involved in the blocking. He tries to get a block downfield. A little different wrinkle in the option. <laughs> Second and 13. Here's Green back again. Oh. Staying on his feet, breaking a couple of tackles. Boy, Green. is he powerful. Yeah, Green just one of three talented backs at Nebraska, along with Damon Benning and... D'Angelo Evans, the freshman, rushed by committee. Look at their totals. Yeah, game. that's right. These are number one and two in the country. You take the I-backs, the three main I-backs for Nebraska, they'd be ranked number three if they were one person. And in many ways, they are one person. They're an interchangeable part of that offense. Tom Osborne with a lot of options in the backfield. Splitting up that playing time. Osborne doing a lot of things in the name of education and athletics. Third down and four. Two tights and two wides. Green, the lone back, a busted play. And Frost is sacked at the 16. Monte Rager again. You know, Osborne told us he didn't think this crowd would be that noisy. He looked around at the stadium yesterday, Mark, when you and I were talking to him, and Dean Blevins, and he said, you know, it doesn't seem like it would be all that noisy. But I tell you what, there was definitely a miscommunication there as Scott Frost... Did he get the message to Armand Green? And Nebraska will have to punt. It's fourth down and long. See, I think they're going to try to run the counter tray. If you look at what the offensive linemen are doing. Yeah, there's the block. But, uh, you know, the back was supposed to first counter right and then go back to the left. Green didn't do it. So it sets up a difficult situation here for the Cornhusker offense. Check that third down and nine. 
Cross up top completes the pass to Vedral. And John Vedral has a first down. A huge completion and conversion on third. A 29-yard pickup, Turner making the tackle. What a great competitor, John Vedral, and he's part of a three-wide receiver set, and he nestles in between the short and the deep pattern. See how he's right in between there, turns it upfield, takes a good shot right here. Doesn't seem to phase him so much as Corey Turner put the elbow on him. A big conversion for the Cornhusker offense. Yeah, time now becoming a factor with 1.50 to play in the first half. First down on the pitch. And they put it on the ground. Texas Tech has it at midfield. Jody Brown pounced on the loose ball. The third turnover for Nebraska. Well, you got to crash pressure the defense or the offense, and you got to create turnovers if you're going to beat Nebraska. Ahmad Green drops the pitch. It was right in his stomach. It certainly was entirely his fault. Jody Brown jumps on the football, and you have to wonder if Green got a lot of practice time coming off that turf toe. They seem to say he was ready. They said he practiced this week. But, you know, when you're not around for the last two weeks or so, and you're forced into this kind of situation, it's a little bit different. Everything happens a lot faster. Sure is. Play fake. Lethridge to throw. And it is dropped by Donnie Hart. Hit him in the hands. Texas Tech trying to reinvent that Arizona State formula. And let's go downstairs to Dean. Well, the numbers are holding up incredibly. Texas Tech holding Nebraska to 1.5 yards on first down. I mean, I don't remember when that's ever been happening before. You see the three big turnovers. They've also had a couple of other balls on the ground that were not recovered by Texas Tech so it is working so far Jason Peter by the way is in with a hurt hand they'll look at it and try to have him back out for the second half for Nebraska all right he's a key member of that defense and here's a key member of Tech's offense number four Byron Hansbard tackled by John Hess Hansbard gaining about five on that play you know before that that play that Donnie Hart dropped that that was a play that they had wide open there you look at the rushing so far 68 yards for Nebraska 58 yards for Hansbard he's certainly having an acceptable day so far in this football game but uh, you know that drop was a big play I, I think Leopard threw that too hard though I think Hart you know had an opening there and, and he threw one hard to him on a slant in before threw it hard there and it hurt him. All right, let's check in with some other programming and shows coming up a little later on ABC. <laughs> well, our man Todd Blasley just prepared with all those clickers, huh? 10-10, 127 to play in the first half. Third and five. Compared to the tight end, Kyle Alvin. And a first down for Tech at Nebraska's 31. Mike Minter made the tackle. A pickup of 15 on the play. They stopped the clock with 122 in the half. Yeah, we watched Kyle Alleman in practice the other day, and Spike Dykes commented to us, boy, he looked a little nervous before this game. He dropped a couple of passes. That was a great reception, though, for him. He keeps this drive alive for Texas Tech. Four receivers on first and 10. 115 to play in the half. Lethridge seemingly finding his mark, passing. They hand it off this time to Hansbard, who weaves his way through a couple of tacklers down to the 28. Well, he could be a player of the game, and speaking of which, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the General and Chevrolet MVP of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So far, there's the numbers. He's upped his average now to four per carry. Lethridge is going to throw. And he goes down at the 33 under pressure from Mike Rucker, his second tackle for loss today. Rucker taking advantage of the fact that there was pressure from the right side initially that forced, forced Lethridge up in the pocket. And he came in cleaned up, but I'll tell you what, Mike Rucker's having a heck of a ball game on yeah, sure St. Is. Joseph, Missouri. What is really making his presence felt. And that's what the beauty of this defense. They are two and three deep all across the board. Well, tonight on ABC, all new episodes of Second Noah, Craig T. Nelson and Coach, Common Law and Relativity, the brand new series everyone's talking about, all new tonight on ABC. Well, 35 seconds remain to play in the first half. Byron Hansbard, one of the top rushers, the top rusher in the country. Troy Davis also with the Big 12, one of the top rushers in the country. 
Here's a look at the comparison of the two. Troy Davis of Iowa State at one time during the season led the country in rushing. Different type of runner from Byron Hansbart. The thing that people don't realize about Hansbart, John, is that he has 10.2 100-meter speed. That's quick. And here's a look at our NCAA rushing leaders entering today's action. And the ones highlighted are members of the Big 12 Conference. Hansbart Davis, Thompson Henley, and Damon Parker, a talented Richard freshman from Oklahoma. Third down and 13 for the Red Raiders. Trips left. Nebraska's blitzing. Lethridge up top had a man wide open. Hart was open, but Lethridge overthrew him. John, you pointed it out a couple of throws ago. Lethridge has been a little strong in his arm today. A little strong on his throws. He has. I think he's a little puffed up. Hart definitely came open late, but he expected the ball, I think, a little later than it was released by Lethridge. It looks like they're going to line up for about a 50-yard field goal here, Mark, from yep. Jarrett Greaser. Jarrett Greaser, in practice earlier today, I saw him kick a field goal from 60 yards out. So if he makes this, folks, it's no surprise. This one coming from 50 yards away. Greaser. Missed it just barely to the left. I mean, he couldn't have missed that by more than six or seven inches. Yeah, you're right. It was just a hair outside the upright. You know, those longer field goals tend to hook a little bit. He had a lot of leg in that, though. Oh, yeah, plenty of leg. We'll take a look at it again. Good hold by Field Scoble. Ball's up. And it just is heading at that upright. It's still inside. It's still inside. And then starts to hook a little bit. Hold it right there. And now it's just a little bit outside as it goes over that upright. It's interesting that Greaser was telling me in practice yesterday that that's the end of the stadium he likes kicking towards. Probably because the prevailing wind is usually behind him, no doubt. The game is up the middle, and Damon Benning still on his feet, finally brought down at the 46-yard line, a pickup of 21 with 18 seconds to play in the half. Jody Brown, number 30, made the tackle for Texas Tech. Do not fall asleep against Nebraska. No. You know, there's a little bit of a letdown here. You know, I'm sure uh, Texas Tech thinking they're just going to take it to the house at halftime. And all of a sudden, Damon Benning bursts one up the middle. And, uh, you know, they wind up in field position here where they could get some points on the board. Nebraska, John, calling its first time out. They have two remaining. Texas Tech with one remaining in the first half. 18 seconds to play. We're tied at 10. Look at a pensive Tom Osborne. Florida leading Auburn. It's interesting, some of the Auburn players were talking a lot of smack before that game. Don't want to do that against Steve Spurrier's crew. Hey, Air Force giving Notre Dame a battle. There's two rushing attacks going at it. And a big upset in the Big Ten. Eighteen seconds to go here. Northwestern coming back to defeat Wisconsin. Barry Alvarez probably losing some more hair after that bad yeah. loss. Well, Brian Goings, the field goal kicker, was the hero when they beat Michigan. 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. They're behind in this game against Wisconsin to come back to win again. Three wide receivers out to the top of your screen on first and ten. Damon Benning is the lone back. Frost goes up top into traffic, almost picked off. He took a chance on that one. Tony Darden, number 11, broke it up. He's the six-foot junior, 196 pounds. Darden had an interception last week against Kansas, which led to a touchdown and their subsequent victory. Yeah, that's right. They were behind 17-14 in that football game when he came up with the key interception. Frost just three of nine for 54 yards with an interception which led to a touchdown. Second and 10, 12 seconds to go. Chris Brown has a strong leg if they could get in range, but they go downtown and it's incomplete and a flag. Oh no. A late flag. No. I'm not sure that was catchable. I watched that the whole way. The ball wasn't catchable and both players were jostling for position. Corey Turner, number 21, 
could be whistled for the infraction here. He was covering Brendan Holbein. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Watch Tony Darden, number 21, as he's working on the receiver, Brian Holbein. Now, there's a little bumping there. He turns for the football. Ball's in the air there, and that, you know, that's a ticky-tack call. That's, that's something you just don't see called a whole lot. It's only 15 yards, so it's not as devastating as it would be in the pros, but it certainly gives Nebraska good field position. Moves them into field goal range, perhaps. It's against Texas Tech. So they're going to tack on 15 yards for the interference. And let's see if they tack on an additional 15 for the personal foul. Take one more look at the quarterback. And if there was a late hit. Yeah, you could define that as late. Sure, Cody McGuire, 74. I remember, he got in a fight earlier with Dishman, so payback is something, isn't it? <laughs> what, I could see why some people want to get after him a little bit. That's what you call a get back. From 49 yards out, Chris Brown. He's one for one today. He has a long of 50 this year. And here it comes. Brown. It's short. Well, after 30 minutes, the 22-point favorite Nebraska Cornhuskers are in a ball game, folks. We're tied at 10 apiece. Texas Tech hanging tough. Spike Dykes, your team's still alive. We'll be right back. Halftime coming up. Valvoline halftime. The team is tied with the number five ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. 10-10 at halftime. They came into the game 22-point underdogs. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola. Dean Blevins downstairs. So far, one of the stories of the game, the fact that neither team's offense has generated much. Well, I think you have to look at the defensive side, though, Mark. I mean, both defenses are shutting down the rushing attack, and that's been the key to this football game so far. Let's uh, update the Arizona State formula for success against Nebraska with Dean Blevins. Dean? Well, Mark, that Arizona State formula has worked. They said they were going to make Scott Frost beat them. Texas Tech said they were going to make Scott Frost beat them. Take a look at the first down numbers on first down. Here is what Nebraska has done, 2.8. They have forced three turnovers. That number could have been five. They have pressured Frost four times, and guys defensively, they are all after him. In my mind, the Nebraska offense relies totally on seven in the second half to put points on the board. John? Yeah, I think that that's the key to this football game. You know, definitely the turnovers, and here's the key turnover in this football game. Remember, Nebraska had scored on a fumble recovery, and right here, Robert Johnson picks off a pass, by Scott Frost, evens the score at that point at 7-all. And this, I think, gave Texas uh, Tech some. Dean spoke with the coach. Well, Spike, you told us yesterday if your club could just figure out a way to hang in there after one, hang in there after two, you think you have a chance to pull off the upset? Well, we're hanging on by thread, Dean. It's just up and down. And, you know, our guys are playing hard. We're playing. We've got to be a little more effective. We've got to make some more plays. But we got a chance. we really got a chance to win this ball game. What do you do offensively? Well, we just got to get, we got to get consistent. we got to go put some drives together. We've got to figure out a way to move that ball against them. Right, they coach. got a great defensive football team. It's going to be tough. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, Dave. Well, that's the question that a lot of coaches around the country are asking. How to move the ball against Nebraska. So far, though, Tech getting it done defensively, more importantly. They're tied at 10 apiece as we get set to begin the third quarter of play. Texas Tech kicking off. Keep in mind that the game started with Texas Tech receiving, and they fumbled on the first play of the game for Nebraska touchdown. Jarrett Grief for kicking off. Damon Benning and D'Angelo Evans back deep. And Benning watches it bounce through the end zone, and they'll start off on their own 20. As I said, it was a good defensive struggle in this football game so far. Rushing yards, both teams under 100 yards, total yards. Tech at 96, Nebraska 143. Nebraska with the three turnovers right there leading to seven points. And you know this uh, Texas Tech defense has taken a page from that Nebraska formula and also from the Arizona State formula. And that's pressure, pressure, pressure on defense. It's working so far in this football game. First five games, three of those, remember, occurred against Arizona State. Could have been worse. Here's Amon Green. 
who did not have an Amon Green-like first half. He runs for about seven yards on that play, tackled by Jody Brown and Anthony Armour. Green coming off of that turf toe injury. Didn't quite seem like himself in the first 30 minutes of play. Was shaken up early in the first quarter, came out, then returned to the ball game, averaging just 2.7 per carry so far. Green in the backfield along with number 28, Brian Schuster, the fullback. Kenny Cheatham in motion, the toss to Green, who's brought down for a loss on that play. Number 30, Jody Brown, the strong safety. The defense keying in on everybody and letting Scott Frost beat them, trying to make Scott Frost beat them. You know, Jody Brown took the place of Marcus Coleman. They lost some key defenders on this Texas Tech defense. Sean Banks, Zach Thomas, who's, I think, the NFL Rookie of the Year now with Miami, the middle linebacker, and Marco Coleman. But Jody Brown took Coleman's spot, and it's doing a great job so far here today in the season. Third and five. Incomplete intended for Vedral, who dropped it. Robert Johnson providing the coverage. Vedro looking back at his teammates and saying, my bad. You know, that's where Scott Frost, you know, his numbers don't show up well sometimes. But when players drop passes for you, you know, it can cause pressure for all parts of the offense. That's clearly what's going to be a completion in the first down. But Vedro simply dropped the football. Jesse Cush into punt. Back deep for Texas Tech. Clint Robertson and Matt DeBuck. Kicking into a wind. Cush, low snap. And he gets off a fantastic punt. Driving Richardson back to the 20. And he steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Wow, a 55-yard kick. 12 on the return. The number five team in the country in a dogfight right now when we come back. About as good as it gets for me. Mike Dykes told us that his team would have to be in it in the third quarter for confidence sake. A look at the possessions in the first half. Both teams ending the first half with missed field goals. Hansbard out over the 35 to the 37-yard line, a gain of about five on first down. Tackled by Terrell Farley and Jamel Williams, number 28. Hansbard was not only the team's leading rusher, but the team's leading receiver a year ago. So he's a versatile back and has tremendous speed, as we mentioned earlier. A couple of players check it in the game. One is Malcolm McKenzie, number 17. He's a guy I'd like to see them get the football to in this game. He's on the right side at the top. He's certainly their big play receiver. He's had no opportunity so far today. Flag down on the play. As they run it, it's Hansbard. Yep, Jared Thomas jumped off sides on the right side of the offense. He's lined up on the left side. We've seen it a couple of times today. It's an unorthodox offense, and it really throws those defensive linemen who like to get a jump on the football. Yeah, it's against Nebraska. Tom Osborne, head coach for 24 seasons at Nebraska. His team in a ball game right now with 12.58 to play in the third quarter. Two teams have met three previous times with the Cornhuskers winning all three meetings. You know, it's funny. Ben Kaufman, number 75, scored the touchdown the last time they played. He uh, had a fumble recovery in the end zone. The left tackle for Texas Tech. So he knows how to get in the end zone offensively. Maybe he can tell his guys on offense, this is how you do it, fellas. Gone are the days of the Fumble Ruski. You won't be seeing that anymore. <laughs> Second down and one for Texas Tech. Play fake. Lethridge up top. Has a man, and it's overthrown. Intended for Mitchell. And he was covered stride for stride by Ralph Brown, the freshman. Number 22 right there on your screen, who's been tested and picked on a lot this year. But he's responded extremely well. Yeah, Stacy Mitchell, he's 5'5". Five, five. He's the third smallest guy in Division I-A football. I don't know if he's the kind of guy you want to go up top to on a play-action pass. I talked about Kaufman, though. Watch the good pass protection he affords his quarterback. This guy's a definite pro prospect. People are looking at him. 
He's going against Peters. He does a good job of maintaining his balance, keeping his shoulders square, and getting a good push on the pass rush. John, third down and one for Texas Tech. Full house backfield. It's going to be close. It's a fumble. Another turnover. Second time that Hansbart's run right up the middle. it get been hit, and the ball's come out. They're still fighting for it. And Nebraska has the ball. Nebraska has three turnovers. Tech now has two. Man, oh, man, happened in the first possession of the first half, first possession of the second half. Pressure comes right up the middle. Third and one situation. Boy, that ball just gets hit and pops right out. Ralph Brown, number 22, who was defending on that last pass play, made the fumble recovery. It appeared as if Johnny ran it into his own man almost. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that Wistrom got through. He got, seemed to get a shoulder on there as he came through. So another key turnover in their own territory for Texas Tech. Nebraska with propitious field position. 12.36 to play in the quarter. Green the deep back out of the eye on the option. Brock keeps it himself, tackled at the 41. Tackled by Monte Rager. <laughs> The one thing that won't happen to number four, Hansbard, is he will not become, he won't get nervous. That's Rudy Maskew, the running back coach, talking to his offense, keeping him settled on the sidelines. We ran into him at a Mexican restaurant the other night, had a nice chat with him, does a real good job with his running backs, and he's on the sidelines, other coordinators up in the booth. They hand it off, Green, Amon Green, with some tough running down to the 28. A 12-yard pickup. The tackle made by Jody Brown. That's the Amon Green that most people are used to seeing. He can run inside, can run outside. He's the sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska, who got bigger this year without losing any of his speed. Yeah, if you look at him, six feet, 215 pounds. He is solid running back. First down and 10. Two tight end formation. They give it to the fullback. Down to the 21-yard line. Brian Schuster, number 28, tackled by Rager. And, you know, John, that's one thing Nebraska will do. They'll get you on the pitch, the pitch, the pitch, and then that one time they'll surprise you, I guess, with number 28, the fullback. You're right, and I, and I think that's what the option is designed to do. I think uh, the defense for Texas Tech has put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, on the running backs in the pitch, and sometimes you get slanting outward and you forget about what's happening up the middle. Schuster... Does a good job picking up the yards there. Second down and three. Two tights and two wides. Amon Green has the first down at the 17-yard line. That was second and three. So we're seeing Nebraska gain a little more yardage on this drive on first down. Eric Butler made the tackle from his middle linebacker spot. And they seem to be having success attacking, instead of attacking east to west, attacking right up the middle on the Cornhusker defense, or I'm sorry, on the Texas Tech defense. Nebraska with the ball in the 17. It's first and 10. Amon Green is the lone back. Whistles. Not sure they got the playoff in time. Dead ball. Both start on the offense. We're still playing first down. So they'll move it back a few yards and we'll replay first down. That's the sixth penalty today for Nebraska. A lot of offside calls on the defense, particularly. They average five a game, so they're above their average. Amon Green, the lone back. It's been almost exclusively Amon Green today. Tech coming with a blitz, and Green, that's why it's exclusively Green, because he can get the job done, down to the three-yard line, a 19-yard pickup before finally being tackled by Corey Turner and Jody Brown. David Benning was going to get some carries in the first half, we saw that, D'Angelo Evans is going to substitute in the second half, but Amon Green is the main man for this offense, Mark. He now has 20 carries for 76 yards. Still looks like he's running a little gingerly on that foot as he goes off the football field. 
Yeah, but he stepped up his performance in this drive. Coach is telling us he's learned to play with those Knicks and Hurts. There's D'Angelo Evans, the freshman, stacked up at the three-yard line. <laughs> That's the true freshman about so much has been written and spoken so far. I think he took off a little early, though. I, mean, I think he might have been a little thought he was a little closer to the goal line. Need a little more hang time yeah, on that. Yeah, a little closer to the line of scrimmage. I mean, you don't take off from four yards back. He rushed for over 100 yards in two consecutive games. Had 12 carries for 105 last week against Baylor. And 21 rushes for 168 the week before. Evans, the deep back out of the eye. Frost keeps it himself. And Frost takes it to the house. Touchdown, Huskers. Nebraska takes a six-point lead. Texas Tech wanted Scott Frost to have to beat them. Scott Frost beat him on that play. Here he runs the option and follows behind Brian Schuster, the fullback to mean so much to the sophomores. Wes Schuster, 28, to seal things off inside. He gets a block there. And that's, that's right in the back of your fullback. <laughs> Literally. The extra point added by Chris Bound. A seven-play, 41-yard drive. Nebraska leads by seven when we come back. Scott Frost just moments ago capping that 41-yard drive. Set up by that Byron Hansbard fumble. And the quarterback ran it in from three yards out. The transfer from Stanford University. He's talking about the fact that he didn't think that attending Stanford was a bad decision. He wanted to play for Bill Walsh, but time came there he thought things over and decided to come back home to Nebraska he wanted to win yep. <laughs> that was a big part of the decision he said, I better chance of winning a national championship in Nebraska than I do at Stanford that's reason enough Chris Bound kicking off and it's a fumble oh no this is not what Texas Tech needs Nebraska says they have it yeah the, the, the deep backs the kickoff returners were too far back. They didn't judge the win. And Texas Tech retains possession. And you could see them scampering at the very end to get up to the football as it took flight. I guess a gust of wind came and knocked that football down. And watch how they scamper to get up there. They're not, neither one of them are in position to field the football. That was Stacy Mitchell, number yeah. six. And his cohort, Clint Robertson, number two, wasn't in position either. So Texas Tech gets a break there. And you can hear a smattering of Nebraska fans making the majority of the noise right now. There they are. There's a smattering of Nebraska people wearing red. Come on. Hangs on to it, goes airborne, clears the 25, and it's brought down to the 26. And you yeah. can hear somebody down there saying, hang on. And I think he's revved his engine up a little bit. And this is why they're saying, hang on. First play of the game, he put it on the ground. Terrell Farley ran it in for the touchdown. That wasn't the first one. He did it earlier, too, just moments ago. And that led to the Scott Frost three-yard run on the option. And a seven-point lead for Nebraska. But back they come to their marquee player. Hansbard again. Tackled by John Hess, the middle linebacker. 14 of Nebraska's points are off those two turnovers, one directly and one indirectly. That really has hurt Texas Tech today. The one thing they didn't want All to do, right, of course, is turn the football over. You know, as he's running in the middle, I'm just wondering, we see an injured player on the sideline getting stretched out. D'Angelo Evans, the freshman. He must have hurt himself when he rip. took flight on that uh, <laughs> one-yard plunge. I'm wondering how much the loss of Ryan Jones is hurting that inside running game. He's a very effective blocker, and they may miss him here today. Hansbart on third and one. My, it's going to be close. He got the right-footed spot from the official. He was tackled by Scott Saltzman. And it looks like they're going to bring in the chains to measure. 
It has not been an easy day running for Byron Hansberg. Came in averaging over 217 yards per game. And so far he has run for a total of just 73. But a busy day in college football. It's a first down. Let's go back to Roger Twible in New York. Well, Mark, it's been a struggle for a lot of the top teams today, including Ohio State. Against Purdue, Stanley Jackson finds a seam up the middle and in the third quarter takes it in from 10 yards out, and the Buckeyes finally go on top of Purdue 21-14. Mark. All right, John, back here. Pardon me. Roger. Old habits die hard. 7.50 remaining in the third quarter. Ledrick complete to Malcolm McKenzie. Malcolm getting it done that time by any means necessary. The first down after a 12-yard pickup tackled by Ralph Brown, the freshman. Yeah, I like Malcolm McKenzie. I talked to the wide receiver coach, David Moody, about him. He said he's a guy that has to step up. He's the guy that needs some confidence. He has big play potential. I just don't know if he realizes it yet. And it's great to see him get involved in the offense. You know, one thing they do here is roll all the wide receivers. You know, sometimes you're better off just playing some guys and letting them get into the flow of the football game. First and ten, Lethridge to pass again. Has his intended receiver, Donnie Hart, who's dropped two today. That time, emphatically squeezing the ball. Then again, sometimes it's good to roll your wide receivers. <laughs> Donnie Hart, I'm sure, is happy to finally hold on to a football today. He had two balls that he dropped, but both of them were thrown very hard by Lethridge. There's a look at Hart. The 6'1", sophomore, 187 pounds. Next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, Virginia tries to snap Florida State's win streak. Played a heck of a game last year. Ohio State takes on Iowa, Texas, Colorado. That's where we'll be in Boulder. And Washington is at Oregon. That's 3.30 and 2.30 Central Time, plus one more Pac-10 game on the West Coast. The pass complete to the tight end and dropped. It was in Kyle Alman's hands and dropped. You know, if I'm quarterback Zebby Lethridge, I've got to let them hear about it just a little bit coming back to the huddle. Yeah, you sure do, and I know nobody's more upset than Kyle Alleman. Made a nice catch early in this football game, but there off the play action, he had a nice seam working on a little bit of a sail route. Ball was thrown right in his hands, right in front of his eyes. It's not a tough catch, but he did not hold on, and I, that's some of those nerves there from the redshirt freshman that we saw carried over from practice on uh, Thursday. Yeah, no doubt. Third down and two. Tech, 4 of 11 on third down conversions. Hansbard, the deep back out of the offset eye. Flag down. This will be offside again against Nebraska. Again on the same side of that defensive line. Yeah, this time they will take the penalty, but I think, you know, one thing about a defense is if you're set up to be with speed and you have those fast defensive ends, they love to get off early on the count. Jared Thomas at the top, number 93. Again, that hard count takes him off uh, off and he's not looking at the football he's got to look at the football out of the corner of his eye One. first down there's such a penetrating defense that that kind of stuff makes them susceptible to it and you got to give the Texas Tech offense for what they've been able to do let's go downstairs to Dean guys Casey Jones is in number 65 offensive right guard he got a temporary restraining order making him eligible there was a technicality regarding his eligibility, and he missed the first six games, but he's in there now. And they run over his side, Dean, down to the 42-yard line. You know, Casey Jones, the guy that had 22 career starts, he expected to play this year and was denied his eligibility on August 30th. Uh, so he filed three different appeals with the NCAA, and then finally uh, they went to court, and the school is separate from the whole temporary temporary restraining order the school cannot be punished in any way by the NCAA that's part of the whole temporary restraining order so he's in there nobody's happier because he's a very solid part of this offensive line and a fresh body at this point too six minutes to go in the third quarter Lethridge overthrows number 18 Sheldon Bass had him on the slant route Mike Fullman the senior with the coverage seen him over throw a few receivers today there's his number six of 15 again below the 500 mark yeah he's having a tough time today he struggled early in the season at 36 percent see two TDs and two interceptions and really has come on the last three games 55 percent four touchdowns two interceptions 
He has thrown over people today, and it's usually been when the wind's behind him. You know, you really have to gauge that wind, and he throws such a strong ball to begin with. I think it's sailing on him a little bit. Right now, John, the wind in his face on third and eight. Lethridge incomplete at the 41-yard line. Booker, Michael Booker, booked it, closed it. And it's fourth down. From Oceanside, California, the most reliable cover man on the team making a big play. Man-to-man -man coverage, tight bump and run. It's very difficult there to throw the out route. You see, right there, he stays up in his zone, does Michael Booker, and he doesn't have to move at all because he's playing in his zone, and everything just came to him. That's a very dangerous pass to throw. Booker leads the team with three interceptions. Jeremy Hernandez standing on his own 44, ready to punt. Still loose. Number 44, John has blocked it. John Hess coming right up the middle here. The guard on the left side does not close down. He's got to help out the center on that play, and that's what allows Hess to come right up the middle. Nebraska had two blocks. See number 83, he steps out. He's got to step inside and seal that gap. That's what hurts the punt protection scheme there by Texas Tech. He came in there unencumbered. That was Kyle Shipley, who has got to seal that inside gap. Frost on the option. Keeps it himself, tackles at the 37-yard line. You know, Nebraska blocked two punts against Kansas State in that football. One, they won. The punter didn't even get the football off. Terrell Farley came right in and, and knocked the thing down. Kansas State is a common opponent of both Nebraska and Texas Tech this year. In the Texas Tech game, they were playing well. Byron Hensbart ran well, as he always does, at 112 yards. But in the end, it was miscues on special teams that did them in. And here's the other number four, D'Angelo Evans, down to the 30. Texas Tech lost that game 21 to 14 against Kansas State. And there's a flag down at the 31 yard line. D'Angelo Evans on the carry. And there's a late flag on that play. I think Robert Johnson was cut illegally. Number seven. See him limping around there in the bottom right of the screen. The flag came out late. But a lot of people saw the call and, and jumped all over the officials. Frost, an undersized linebacker. Dead ball. Personal foul on the offensive team. It'll be a first down. First and 10 after a 15-yard penalty. Well, you heard it. Yeah, D'Angelo Evans uh, carried the ball on that play. You know, he was booed mercilessly at Kansas State out of Wichita, Kansas. You know, they wanted him to stay in the state. Let's see if we can find D'Angelo gets the football. He does a great job cutting back inside for a true freshman. He runs the football so well, but the foul occurred off on the left side, and we can't spot it from that angle. Still waiting down on the field. Nebraska with four wide receivers on this play on first and ten. Evans in the backfield. Quick pitch. Evans gets to the perimeter. And another flag down back at the 49-yard line. Let's go to Roger Twible in New York. Thanks, Mark. The Burger King play of the day was set up by a fumble by Wisconsin as they were trying to run out the clock. And Northwestern Steve Schnurr goes 20 yards to Dwayne Bates. And Northwestern gets a gift from the Badgers, 34-30 the final. Mark. Boy, Barry Alvarez has to be pulling out what's left of his hair after that one. 
Meanwhile, there was a flag thrown back at the 49. Here's a look. Watch at the top of the screen. Very late. You'll see a engagement by the wide receiver. I believe that might be number 33, blocking and pushing and everything else. Sean White again. Yeah, yeah. Whiting, who uh, got involved in that play. Look at the penalty situation so far today. Nebraska with eight of them. It's very uncharacteristic of them. D'Angelo Evans in the ball game. Amon Green not in at the time. Evans brought down for a loss on the play of about one. Dean Blevins, what's up with Amon Green? Dean Amon Green's turf toe, guys, is pretty bad. He was talking to the trainers over here saying it's hurting, hurting him quite a bit, and he's doubtful to return to the ball game. Of course, they have a few guys behind him who can tote the pigskin a little bit, but uh, that turf toe is bothering him. Uh, you did mention their depth, and they do have that. You know, they got to come up for a better name for that because people just don't think turf toe should be that serious an injury. But it is painful. Can't push off on your foot at all. Second and 23, cross. Incomplete drop by Lance Brown. Another ball that's dropped on the quarterback, Scott Frost. Yeah, again, you know, Scott Frost may not have good numbers, but look at the balls we've seen drop today. I mean, that ball was right on the money, and it was a difficult throw between two defenders right in Lance Brown's hands. It was right there. Pedro dropped one earlier. This is a hard throw to make into the wind. Lance Brown moves into the football, gets between his elbows. But you certainly cannot fault Scott Frost on the delivery of that football. Third down and 23. Nebraska had the ball earlier on Tech's 29-yard line. D'Angelo Evans. And hit hard at the 43. Texas Tech is putting a hat on Nebraska. Jones and Donahue with the tackle. Nebraska lost almost 40 yards on that series. You said they had the ball on the 29-yard line. Look where they have it now in the 41-yard line. Watch the hitting. Texas Tech defense coming alive in a, a moment in the football game where they have to. Angelo Evans gets the ball in the flat, tries to work upfield. Man, they just converge on him with that speed on the defensive side. And Jason Jones is pumped up. Jesse Cush standing on his own 28, ready to punt. Robertson and DeBuff back to Another great punt into the win. Robertson. Nebraska's special teams today has been picture perfect. A 44-yard punt, three on the return. The Red Raiders still hanging in there, down seven. I'm Mark Jones, along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins on the sidelines. Right now, Nebraska leads Texas Tech by seven. And there's a look at number 30 for Nebraska, Amon Green, whose turf toe injury has acted up again, and he may not return to the game. He came on in that drive, the first drive of the second half, but, uh, you know, I think he's, as Dean said, out for the game, and that's a difficult injury to recover from. Byron Hansbard recovering from an injury of a different sort mentally when he fumbled. He's fumbled twice today. Brought down on that play by Jeff Ogard. Hansbard is one of the Heisman Trophy candidates. Came into the game averaging 217 yards per contest. Averaging just 3.8 yards per carry today. He seems to be a bit bemused by all the Heisman talk. He's not uh, a guy who's going to let himself get caught up in the excitement of the moment, but uh, Certainly, Nebraska knew he was a Heisman candidate. They've been putting it to him today. Here he is on the counter. Everybody here in Lubbock, of course, hoping that he does win the Heisman. And here in the stands, they have a certain...